What is up, my reefing familia? March here, Fragbox TV. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. What are we gonna talk about today? You never know. You know what? You turn on Fragbox TV. I don't know where you are right now. Maybe you're in the car. Maybe it's in the morning. Maybe you live in the United States. Maybe you live in Africa. Maybe you're at work and you shouldn't be watching reef videos. It's okay, watch them. Your boss doesn't care. Let's do this. Today, we're gonna talk about open brain corals. Why? Because we got some nice ones. So sometimes, I'll have like a video on my idea list. I'd like to show it to you. My, my video idea list is getting really long. It's like stupid long. There's like 30 or 40 of them on there. But sometimes I'm waiting for a specific coral for us to have enough of them in stock, like these open brains, so that I have some actual content or footage to talk to you about it. So if I don't have any open brains, it doesn't make sense to do a video on open brains, and then I'm focusing in on, you know, on strange hammers. That was like why the flower pot, that Ghani Pora video that we did recently, um, I, you know, it took a long time to do because I didn't have any nice flower pots for like the longest time that I could showcase and kind of highlight as we did the video. That being said, we have some nice open brains and I'm going to show you them and I'm going to tell you how to keep them because they are quite easy in my opinion. Okay, give me one sidetrack of the day. I think I'm allowed one, right? Have you guys put a limit on me yet? How many sidetracks I can do? Boom! Come on. Wow. Right? Yeah, I'm alone here in the store. I wish there was someone else here to enjoy how nice this piece is. But today's video is about open brain corals, so I guess we'll jump right into it. These ones are from Indonesia, and they are some of the nicest ones in the world. We also get incredible, incredible, incredible open brain corals from Vietnam. And then also get very nice ones from Australia. They're a little bit different depending on which part of Australia. So there's three or four different places that they collect kind of like in the north, the east, the south, and the west. But depending on which area, they'll be different sizes and different colors. I find the ones from Indonesia are more or less the same size, at least the ones that we're getting in. The ones from Australia, sometimes they're like this. They're nice, but they're a little bit smaller. So this would be um, a little bit more typical of or what I would expect for an Australian open brain. But you find them throughout most of the Indo-Pacific. They are an LPS coral and they are like this one. Let me see if I can pick one up and bother one. I'm going to pick you, buddy. Number 141. Tell them what is one, Johnny. Okay, come here, buddy. So they're like a um, one solitary polyp, like one single piece of coral. They have this flesh. I'm sorry to be bothering you, but it's for you guys. We're bothering the coral for you. See this, how he's retracting kind of back into a skeleton? It's got this soft, fleshy body to it. And then on the other side, oh, sorry, puppy. He's got a, a hard skeleton structure. So it's really uh, the exact opposite. And he's usually have almost like a foot, not really a foot. Let me see if I can show you. It's kind of like a little pointy base, which is sometimes convenient for placing it into the rock. I'm going to talk to you about placement in a second after I'm done molesting this poor coral. This is a very nice piece, kind of, I wouldn't say a common color, the, the, the splatter is really nice. Right here in the middle, it has a mouth. So like a lot of LPS corals, that they have, um, they have mouth. They can actually, they eat and they excrete and they um, kiss each other. No, they don't kiss, they're not romantic. But over here, plate corals, same thing, kind of, kind of similar in that, in that regard. They're kind of like a solitary coral, skeleton base, fleshy on top and it has that one singular mouth, same with Acanthophilia. Very similar to open brain corals, same, very similar care requirements. Maybe a little bit lower flow because they can kind of puff up and, and fly away, but it's got that one singular mouth there. And yeah, there's, there's quite a few. Almost all LPS corals have mouths and they're used for um, for eating. You can spot feed them. So we recommend, or what I feed here in the store, I don't know if you can find it where you live, is this Vitalis. You always hear me talking about this stuff. Maybe I can link in the description uh, feeding video I've done in the past. Love this food. I mean, I don't love it. The corals love it. I don't eat it. I eat human food. But they seem to like it. This is another nice example. And here is probably the nicest one we have right now. So if you're going to add something like this to your tank, in terms of placement, I usually put them on the sand bed. Um, if you don't have sand bed, it can be a little bit tricky. So if you're doing a bare bottom tank, um, like this one over here, if you decided to go bare bottom, which is up to you, bare bottom is totally doable. If you did a tank like this uh, 10 years ago, people would think that you had a couple screws up in the head loose, but this is very common now. Bare bottom is uh, a style of tank. This is gonna be SPS dominated in an acro, so it's not gonna have 
any open grains. If you want to add one to a tank that's bare bottom, you may want to think about putting it on the rock. I don't ever glue them down. Um, you can damage the foot, you can pull out the foot or the skeleton. So I keep them loose on the rock. So usually if I'm going to do it on the rock work, I try to find a spot where they kind of naturally will just fit into the rock. If that makes sense, you try and find a spot where the body is just kind of hugged by the rock. I don't use glue and I don't use epoxy, but typically you put them on the sand and if they get covered with sand a little bit, it's fine because they can actually um, sort of push their sand off their body. They kind of like, they inflate and deflate, inflate and deflate. It's really cool to watch actually. I don't recommend putting sand on them, but they will push the sand right off of them and they'll be able to keep themselves pretty much um, free of any sand. So usually on the sand bed, bottom of the tank, which entails lower light and lower flow, par between 100 to 150. I wouldn't put them high up in the tank they can lose their color. So what happens is if you give them too much light, like most corals, like most LPS corals, they can bleach and um, they don't look very nice. They're gonna drop their bacteria and they're gonna get stressed out and they're gonna look like not so happy. And we wanna keep the corals happy. That's what we do here at Fragbox. That's with most LPS corals. So if you can see in this tank here, this is kind of like our LPS bed, which happens to be very full right now. We just got in some beautiful corals from Indonesia. So this is running some Radeon G4 Pros, quite high above the tank. I think we're like 32 inches there. And the par, the way we're running them, is about 150 evenly distributed throughout this entire tank. It's eight feet long, it's three feet wide, and it's 12 inches high. But the corals are only six inches under the waterline because we use these, um, what am I, what's the word, racks, sorry. We use these racks to prop them up and hold them. So par of about 150. This is kind of like our lower light, lower flow LPS tank. Very, very different than our super high light, high flow. I have the flow off just for the purpose of the videos. I turn them off because it makes it much easier for you guys to kind of enjoy the corals and see them and for me to talk about them. This is usually a tsunami of flow. It's a little bit shorter and it's got crazy light, crazy flow, LPS corals, they like to hang out, they wanna chill. They're kinda of like stoners, what up man, yeah, you know, like they wanna just flow gently in the wind, not the wind, the current. But that's how you should think about most LPS corals. Of course, there are exceptions there. Open brain, low to medium flow. You want them to be able to clear their bodies of any detritus, so you don't want super, super low flow or super, super low light. Kinda of have to find that sweet spot. But usually on the sand bed, if you have your lights dialed in properly, um, you should aim for, like what I do, at least my experience is if you get 100, 100 par on the sand bed, I find the rest of the tank kind of just works itself out nicely. So about 100, 120-ish right here on the sand. If I was going to put an open brain coral in this 90 gallon mixed reef tank, I would probably put one right there. I see like a little, see that crevice there in the rock? That might be a nice... Um, candidate to hold an open brain and give him some room. Oh, I don't want him too close to the torch because he might get he might get stung or not might he's gonna get stung for sure or I would put one right in here right kind of in there I'd wedge one down there in the sand and kind of like get his butt in there or maybe right over here so placement is really important they won't sting each other so in terms of coral warfare and stinging, you don't have to worry about open brains uh, attacking one another. So as you can see, we keep them all together in a nice family of coral and they like to hang out. We do that with most of the corals. We know which ones will sting each other and hurt each other. So if you notice the torches, the um, hammers and frogs spawn sort of all the euphilia on this side, very, very aggressive corals. That's way too close right there, the Bower Banky and the hammer. I'm gonna move it after the video. And then we uh, we have acans over here, and then we have favias and some platygyras, maize brain chalice, um, goniastrias, it moves into flower pots, pipe organs, some more chalice, micromusa. I'm probably talking too much. Okay, let's go over here. So what I was trying to say was the open brain corals, are okay with one another. So if you decided you wanted to do a garden of them, absolutely, they could touch. It would look really cool. It's kind of a popular thing to do. And they don't have a sting, so they're not gonna sting um, any other corals. They can butt up right against other soft corals. You wanna give corals room to grow and breathe and be happy. These are gonna get quite a bit larger over time. So I'd say right now they're um, something like this is maybe two and a half, three inches across. 
but sometimes we get them in like this one over here. This is about six inches. They're gonna get eventually one day, they can grow up to a foot. It does take time and they do swell up a lot with water. So like the skeleton is sometimes half the size of the actual coral. And then when they open throughout the day, they swell up with, uh, with salt water. So at nighttime, they're gonna close and retract back into their body. And then during the day, they're gonna puff up and look nice and happy, just like they do here. They are photosynthetic, so they don't need feeding. They will appreciate just about anything. These guys are like pigs. If you wanna feed them um, fish food, you wanna feed them reef roids, you wanna feed them coral frenzy, whatever ends up in their mouth, frozen food, just about anything, you're basically gonna eat it. Like, they are not very picky when it comes to food, even just regular fish food. I'll show you here. Let's grab some of this. Maybe, oh, I gotta turn the flow off. Maybe I should have done this at the beginning of the video, but they're really, really not picky. You don't have to feed them because, like I said, they're photosynthetic. Like most LPS corals, like most of the corals we sell here in our store. Sorry, if you wonder why I'm over here, I'm just pressing uh, feed mode on our, our handy Apex controller. If you don't have an Apex controller, go out and get one. Okay, sorry. Um, like most LPS corals, actually all the corals here in this entire tank, everything in here, all of them, there's about 250 of them, they're all photosynthetic. So they're all gonna take in light and transform that into um, a source of food. But they do like to be fed and if you wanna get the best results, you want them to look fat and happy and healthy, feeding is definitely the way to go. So this is just regular fish food, just to show you, I'm being really lazy here. But um, they, they love this stuff. He's gonna eat it up. And I don't know where they put it because like in 15, 20 minutes after they're done consuming it, they're ready to go again. Some, sometimes they'll open up throughout the day and they'll show you their feeder tentacles. So I guess they're telling you they're hungry. And I think that's about it. I would consider them an easy coral. I don't know, when should you add them to your tank? Mm, I wouldn't add them first. I think because of the cost. So. This incredible one over here that I kept showing you, it's about 500 Canadian, maybe it's like 350, 400 US. Uh, most of them around 100-ish. I wouldn't add it as your first coral. You know, I would try some other LPS corals first. I can do a video talking about which would be the best candidates for adding a first coral. But let's say you're keeping, you know, some Acan, some Duncan, some Chalice, some Favia, other LPS. Go ahead and try one of these maybe a couple months in. In terms of water chemistry, they don't need anything special. So as long as you're maintaining what we, like, what we aim here for the store is close to natural seawater as possible with a little bit elevated magnesium just because I find that the LPS corals do appreciate that bump in in magnesium they seem to be a little bit I want to say just healthier happier these guys don't grow terribly fast so um, I, I don't think I mentioned that I said that you know one day they're gonna get to a foot big that takes years and years and years don't avoid buying one because you're afraid that it's gonna you know take over the whole tank you can trade it in or sell it to someone at a later date they don't grow crazy crazy fast and they don't propagate as far as I know in sorry they don't propagate as far as I know in reef tanks so it's a solitary coral it is what it is it's not going to go out and sprout a bunch of babies around your tank and you cannot frag them some stores do that's uh up to them I think it's a little bit unethical just gonna say it just gonna put it out there I don't frag them you can cut them right down the middle and they will heal it takes like seven to eight months for them to look normal again. I've seen many stores do it. I'm not gonna call out any names. I'm not gonna say any other stores out there that do it. Um, I don't think it's right because a lot of consumers don't even realize that they've been fragged. Anyways, I'm not gonna get into that. I wanna talk to you about keeping these things alive. So we don't frag them. I don't recommend fragging them. Leave them, let them be as they are. I don't think you would like to be chopped in half so someone can make more money off you. Hey, Mr. Salesman. Anyways, in terms of care, easy. Don't add as your first coral, but um, still an easy LPS. If you got any questions, I guess, about keeping them, feel free to hit us up or in the comments below. If you like open brain corals, is that the question of the day? Or what's another LPS coral you wanna see me do a video on? Because you know what we do here at Fragbox? Yeah, that's right. A video every single day of the week. So, so with that being said, I guess I will leave you guys for the evening. These open brains here are not gonna last long. I'm gonna throw them up on the website. Unfortunately, as many as you already know, cannot, cannot, cannot 
shipped to the United States of America. Although I would love to, and I promise you, I'm gonna do a video explaining why not. It's 100% related to cost and all oh, the fish are eating the fish food I put in the open brain. And uh, it just wouldn't make sense for us to ship stuff down there. Once I give you the breakdown of CITES and US, um, I think it's a uh, wildlife service, all inspection and uh, all the stuff you need, you know, to order one coral, it's gonna be like $1,000 in permits plus two to 300 in shipping. You'd have to buy half of this tank for it to, to, to really be, to make sense, to make sense financially. But that's, a, that's gonna be a future day, a future video. I hope you guys like this one. If you did, there's a thumbs up button and that's how I'll know. Or let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, that lets us know too. And we'll be back here tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Fragbox TV. Quick little side note, dipping them. Yes, always a good idea to dip corals. If you're ever gonna add a coral in your tank, go ahead and dip it. They're pretty hardy. You're not gonna hurt it by dipping it. Don't be worried about causing it um, harm from a dip. But as far as I know, there are really no known pests or predators of open brain corals. You should be more worried if you got angelfish in your tank because they're gonna most likely take a liking to these. Um, even copper band butterflies, those kind of fish, um, but in terms of pests, there's really no nudies or worms or anything that I know of. Correct me if I'm wrong below. Um, yeah, let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing that can come on it. Obviously, you can get a pest that's unrelated, like a pest that you don't want in your reef tank in general, like a worm or crab or something like that, but you're not gonna get something that specifically eats open brain coral. So go ahead and, and dip it if you like, but usually just a visual inspection of the base. There's not really much that hangs out on these.